Monday, May 7th, we're at Apple Street's restaurant. And uh, if everyone can please um, stand and put the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. represents the needs of all Lemster Public School students and places their interests above all others. We will exercise leadership, adhere to our protocols, and base our decisions upon a recent assessment of all available information. We will advocate for each of our schools and support high quality public education in Lemonster. So as we begin our public forum, I just want to remind the public that during this session, we cannot respond to you. Um, we are certainly um, taking everything that you say um, seriously, but we just are not able to engage in a dialogue. So upon that, um, the first person who signed up is Gary. Please uh, state your full name and your address, please, for the rest of the time. Gary Zorman, Lenny Road, Lemister. I have a couple of ideas and suggestions. Um, this has nothing to do with the person filling the position of superintendent or future superintendents. Um, my first suggestion would be um, never do more than a three year contract with anybody. Um, you do your job, you keep your job. Simple as that. Um, but I would suggest one year option with a second and third. Second, second idea uh, has to do with accountability. A few years back, uh, a raise was given out to somebody, and um, the school budget wasn't doing too well at that point. Um, and the school committee really had no power to stop it, do anything about it, because the superintendent can do what he wants at a certain point. I actually called the state uh, school committee, and they said the only action you can do is in previous budget, uh, future budgets is make line items to raises in certain positions. So my suggestion would be to create a policy or um, resolution, however you want to write it up, and sign it with the superintendent. And what I would suggest it says something to the point of no raises or stipends to any direct report to the superintendent without the, um, the body that is, gets voted in here, uh, school committee approval. Um, it's a simple gesture. Uh, I think it goes well not with one person having the power to give raises or stipends without the school committee approving them. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. The next person is Carrie Noseworthy. Good evening. Uh, my name is Carrie Noseworthy and I reside at 95 Smith Street. I first want to thank Paula Deacon for her transparency, communication, and leadership as superintendent of Lemister Public Schools. From her weekly emails to the new signage at Central Office and daily efforts, it's clear she's bringing a positive message to the district and we parents greatly appreciate it. In the past, Lemister has been barely funded over the state minimum requirements or net school spending. Part of this is the antiquated formula to reach the net school spending number and legislation is in the works to address this deficit. Until this is addressed through a policy change, we need to find other ways to ensure our schools are appropriately funded. Continuing to underfund our schools will result in losing valuable teachers and staff and inability to attract new talent, inadequate school supplies and technology, as well as an inability to prepare the children of Lemonster to be competitive in the 21st century learning environment. My children no longer receive art, health class, one child uh, no longer receives a foreign language, and one will receive just a few months of one. I do want to give a shout out to Mr. Blake for all that he has done in order to do his best to address these inequities. But that's what they are, inequities in the education of my children and others due to the budget cuts. My 14-year-old was in LEAP from 3rd to 8th grade and on an IEP. Next year, he will be attending Neshoba Valley Technical High School. All the regular education teachers there have dual certifications in special education. He, along with the rest of the school, will receive a Chromebook. I will be able to see his grades online at any time to monitor his progress, and the first day of his orientation will focus on team building, friendship, and getting to know one another. Um, the uh, school is well equipped with technology, staff, and grants and community partnerships to allow him guaranteed opportunities to work in the community and prepare for college. I live two minutes from Lemonster High School, but I cannot be assured what programs will or will not exist from year to year in our city. 
I am hopeful that with Paula Deacon's leadership and the appropriate funding and prior prioritization of our schools, that Lemon Star can be a rising star. Thank you. Thank you. Robert Lee. Uh, my name is Robert Lee. I live at 24 Stearns Ave in Lemonster. And I know I only have a couple minutes. I'll try to be brief. Um, I've been a teacher, special education teacher for 17 years. The past decade plus has been in this building. I have children who are in Johnny Appleseed. I also have them in middle school. One of my daughters will be here next year. And I just want to put a face to, because we've been talking a lot about budgets, and I just want to talk about morale and what's going on and culture and how it's affected. We are, and I speak mainly for high school because that's where I am, but we feel very much broken. Um, we are losing a lot of faith as a staff in supports from really anybody outside. And part of it is with a lot of change over. We are about to have our fourth principal in six years. And it's not a reflection of anybody's performance, but it does reflect a lot of change at the top. Um, we have a new superintendent. Again, more change at the top. I can speak for the people that I work with, people that I talk with every day. A lot of them are less willing to interact. They're kind of pulling back. There's a great amount of distrust. We have a new contract. We have a NIAS visit coming up. And morale is very, very low. I also want to talk about culture. This fear or this fear of lack of support. And people can say, yes, we support you. But the reality is there's a very strong feeling that there's no support. Um, and this, this fear creates people, people getting more distrustful. We did an exercise looking at a portrait of a graduate, and it's depressing for me because I'm like, this is not what we stress in school. This is not what's rewarded. This is not the culture that we have. Um, a lot of good teachers have left. These are coaches. These are mentors. These are club advisors. And a lot more are looking to leave. And when somebody leaves, who comes to fill it in? We've already lost a lot of staff. We're scrambling. We're doing constantly the best that we can do. And you have a lot of really strong, good educators who are trying very hard, but the feeling is overwhelming that you're alone. Two minutes. Thank you. Is there two minutes, right? Thank you. Chickalini, Good evening. My name is Dominic Ciccolini. I reside at 279 Miriam Ave in Lumenstead. I've been a resident of this city for uh, 72 years. Uh, a year ago at this time, I was greatly disheartened by what was happening in the school system, which I have dedicated half of my life to, 35 years in the system. Uh, this year's school budget, well, last, well, yeah, this year's school budget, for the very fabric from our community, I believe. Um, person, individual against individual, family member against family member. I have some hope for this year's budget, seeing what positive initiatives that the superintendent, uh, Paula Deacon, and her administration have taken. But there is still millions of dollars that are sitting in funds, literally, which could save the system, which could bring it back. Uh, it's just stayed there to rest, and that's extremely troublesome. Uh, please, Mr. Mayor, I encourage you to do the right thing, to do what the majority of this community wants, which is <coughs> to not be held up as one of the most dysfunctional systems in the Northwestern County. If not dysfunctional, at least it's uh, wavering all the time. I like the idea of bringing the deans back, at least one in each building. I do think we have to somehow increase the athletic budget of this community. It's all rah-rah when Thanksgiving's around. But when the track team doesn't have any place to go, when we can't send teams because we don't have buses, when we can't pay our coaches, then there is a definite need to increase that. So good luck in your deliberations, but it's time to do the right thing, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Tom Hall. <coughs> Good evening. My name is Todd Hall. I live at 27 Emilio Drive, Lemonster. 
Um, I have been an IT professional for the past 26 years. Uh, for the past 12 years, I have been uh, the network administrator at another school system that's local to us. Um, I'm here to talk about this, um, what, was, what was called a sophisticated hack that came in. Um, in my 26 years, I've never seen such a catastrophic failure in IT. Um, this should have been a minor infiltration, and that was it. It should have been very easily dealt with. We dealt with it in our system within 30 minutes. Um, I'm afraid to say that I believe that the systems that should have been in place weren't. There was no anti-spam, no internet browse filter, no antivirus, no patch management, and certainly there was no backup to recover from this data. Um, you stated that no data got out. Uh, I'd like to know how you came to that conclusion. If you don't have any systems in place to keep anything from coming in, how do you know what's being sent out? I believe that this was um, due to a lack of resources for the IT department, that they did not have the funds to be able to pay for the subscriptions that were needed to be able to maintain the systems and keep our intellectual data protected. Um, as I understand it, um, Mr. Mayor, you put the budget in place last year. Therefore, I believe the fault is yours and yours alone. Uh, you, you failed to provide the resources necessary to be able to protect our uh, digital intellectual data. I believe you owe everyone an apology for that, including me, my children, and all of your employees. Um, I also believe that you should pay back the city the $10,000 for your mistake. And I'm questioning whether or not you have the ability to lead the city going forward because it's clear that you don't hold uh, technology and IT in any esteem. Uh, last statement is I'd like to know uh, going forward what we're going to do to fix this. Thank you. Thank you. Would anybody else like to address the committee? Melissa Bible, 178 Fifth Street in Lemonster. Um, I've sat on the transportation subcommittee and I'm really hoping that the budget that's been proposed goes forward. Um, it's fair, it's transparent, it provides equity. We've come a long way this year. Custodians are back in place, new superintendent, new school committee. But for those of us with kids in the system, there's a lot of inequity, both compared to other communities and within the district. Traveling to different schools for sports this year, the difference in quality of facilities is mind-blowing. The freshman football team didn't even have matching uniforms. My son had duct tape holding his pants up during the football game. And the equipment that was used for the final game versus Fitchburg was borrowed from the Pop Warner team. Within the district, Skyview has no art, no health, no chorus. The Skyview Chorus has always attended a chorus festival that it's been unable to, partially due to funding, but more partially because they're, the kids just aren't prepared. They've had three hours other years to prepare a week. This year they've had one for the kids whose parents can pick them up after school. Transportation remains at risk if it's not fully funded. I request that the city fully fund the transportation budget as requested to provide equity to all kids across the district in programming, to restore three deans for safety, and to provide equity across the district. I also request tonight, if possible, that a roll code call vote be done because I'd like to see who here actually is supporting the budget and who isn't. Thank you. Would anybody else like to address the committee? One more time, would anybody like to address the committee? At this point, that portion of our meeting is closed. And we'll move on to communication. Excuse me. I'd like to address Mr. Halls um, since he pointed not directly at me. I'd just like to make a couple of um, remarks. I mean, one of the things that we just so you know, Dean, and maybe we can do it when we get to maybe new and old business, because we had talked about that we would not be engaging and commenting on the public forum. So when we talk about the budget, that might be some place for you to respond. 
Two dash six of the city charter allows the mayor to address any subject to any, uh, at any time on any matter to the school committee or the city council. So I'd like to exercise that as the mayor of the city since I was pointed out not as a school committee member, but as the mayor. And this will be brief. If you can keep that very brief, please. Um, a, um, the total amount last year, um, and let the record reflect from DESE, over net school spending was $1.7 million. How that money is spent has nothing to do with the mayor. The money is allocated, passed by the city council, as a budget. How the school department spends that, that money has absolutely nothing to do with the mayor. We have two different IT departments. The city does not have an IT department school department does. Our system is backed up. It's secure. We have no control. The city has no control over the school IT system. The only control the mayor has is that um, every year we do the budget and we submit it to the city council. So I'd like that record to reflect. 2017, despite all of the remarks made, the official record from the Department of Education is that we were up, not, did we just meet? First of all, we met net school spending, we went over by 1.7. Again, we have two separate IT systems, two separate IT departments. City does not have an IT department, we subcontract that. Our system is fully backed up. We have a backup for everything. We have a complete secure system. I don't know, where I'm trying to find, get the same answers that Mr. Hall had, along with the police chief, as to what happened here. Not looking to blame anybody. Um, but I just want to make sure those things are entered into the record. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move on, please. Superintendent. Uh, there are no communications. Excellent. How about a superintendent's report? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, first off, I'd like to celebrate this week for all teachers and nurses. It is their appreciation week. Many of the teachers and nurses chose to celebrate last year, uh, last week, because of MCAS testing. So that's where these public people put their priorities. So they kind of got it out of the way so they could take care of students this week. With that, I do want to acknowledge that we have lost um, yet another teacher in Lemonster Public Schools. Over the April break, uh, Marianne Rosa from Johnny Appleseed passed. Um, she ended her career, and she started in 1989. She ended as a first grade teacher. Very suddenly, it was um, very commendable the way the staff pulled together in difficult times and trying to communicate, but I respectfully um, would like to take a moment of silence for Mary Ann Rosa. Thank you. And that is it. Thank you, Superintendent. And we're going to move on to the public hearings. The first public hearing will be on school choice. Good evening. In your packet, um, you have provided a copy of the guidelines that we use in our district. And it is my um, wish that tonight we would review those guidelines and then ask the school committee for their um, vote as to this year. Every year we come before you and we review the guidelines and um, the guidelines remain for members in classrooms, K through one, classrooms that are below 20 students. Grade two, classrooms below 22 students per class. Grades three through eight, classrooms that are below 25 students per class. Grades nine through 12, classrooms that are below 25 per class. Grades 9 through 12 in the CTEI Chapter 74 application process for new incoming students to our district. Grades 9 through 12 for Lemonster Center for Excellence special application process for new incoming students to our district. And I assure you that in uh, the past year overseeing school choice in our district these guidelines are strictly adhered to when any child is accepted through the school choice process. By you um, approving these tonight means that this will be made public and that students or families from outside the district um, may apply for school choice. Great. 
Great. Thank you, Gina. Does anybody have any questions or comments? No, no. Um, Gina, how many this year are school choice? This year, our report that was just submitted, we have 252 students in our district that are school choice students. Last year, because of our numbers and our high numbers in our classroom, there were not many students accepted outside of the district for school choice. Can, can we get an idea, if, I mean, as to how many people are looking? I mean, I think, I think people, some people paint our district as this, this, you know, we're devastated and decimated and all these things. That's not my job, is to criticize. My job is to do the best I possibly can as mayor and as school committee member. I have good things about the school system all the time. Great stories, great success stories about people that went to school here and left and are very successful at what they've done, not only in college, but in their, in their trade, in their own personal business. I think we have more entrepreneurs, and I'm about to back this up, we have more entrepreneurs and business owners that came out of the Lumberstar High School system than probably anywhere else in Worcester County. That's something to tip I had to, but I think the public needs to hear how many people want to come into the system. Unfortunately, we'll have enough seats for right. but how many people would like to come into the system? Last year, we, um, we took applications, every family outside the district would come to the Parent Information Center and apply for school choice. No decisions are made until all of our members are rolled over and we know exactly numbers, but still, People register that are moving into Lumsdor, so the numbers change. Last year, we had 82 kindergarten applications for families outside of Lumsdor wanting to attend Lumsdor Public Schools. And we had over 55 school choice applications grades 1 through 12. We do have articulation agreements with West Boylston, and we have already registered new students wanting to come. <coughs> I've heard nothing but praise, and those families that come from West Boylston are just thrilled to be able to attend Center for Technical Education. So that was just last year. Of those kindergarten children, we used because we didn't have the space. I can guarantee you tonight when this is published in the newspaper we're going to have families lined up filling out the applications but no action is taken until we have our members rolled over and we know exactly where we might have spots and as the guidelines state we may have for a family accept one child into a grade level but not the other because that grade level is closed. So I keep close contact with all administrators in the building and have um, conversations when we go through this process. It's a very involved process in this country and some families don't receive an answer right to the end, but I like to tell them if that grade is full and we're no longer accepting students early on when I know that so that they don't have false hope. I'd like to make a motion to um, accept school choice Great only job. under the terms and conditions that Gene has explained to us and that would be any empty slots available in those um, areas as described. Okay. Excellent. Any other comments? And that would be for Gary K through 12. Yes. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Everybody. Uh, <coughs> so our next public hearing. Can, can we just Inter-school choice, can you oh. explain that? Because last year there were some parents that were really upset, I mean really upset, that they weren't able to get their children that are in the system mm -hmm. in the schools that they wanted. And I understand it because some of it is babysitting, you know, they're working, they have three kids, they're in different schools. I don't make the rules for this, but I just want to make sure everybody understands what the rules are because um, people were really upset last year. Families that live in Lemonster where they live is their neighborhood school and if they choose or they would like to have their child go to a different school in a different neighborhood um, that's called the intra-district school choice. We accept those applications as well because there are certain situations where parents would like their child to attend a different school. Again, we adhere to the guidelines and the class sizes but intra-choice would have priority over any inter from outside of the district. 
and so that's how we sort of go through that. But not everybody, um, even the K registration now, we have been, we are above, ahead of where our K registrations were at this time last year. We're expecting a big K class again this year. Um, and parents are all wanting to know where their child's going to be placed. Um, Jim Riley and his team are very organized in that they have put together all of the process and procedures for placement, and that is done um, in a very structured way. If there are overloads for 1K, because we only have a couple of sections in each elementary, um, where there have been years that we had to do lottery. But priority would go to a child that may already have a sibling in that school, um, but or close proximity to the school. So the K placement, but once a child goes grade one through five, they go to their neighborhood school. And also our fifth grade choice students now that are outside of the districts have all received a letter asking them, because we have two middle schools, which middle school would be their preference. We gather that information and based on space availability, Skyview numbers last year were very high, so most of the school choice from outside the district attended Samasa. So that's sort of how the choice works when they move from one level to the next. LEAP program is in both Skyview and Samoset School. So those children leaving Francis Drake will go to their neighborhood school. Thank you, Gina. So I think also on the um, choice within the district, I just want to make sure that it's clear and understood that um, transportation if is not right. So if you school choice to a school in district that isn't your neighborhood school, you need to provide transportation unless that there's is correct. It is the parent's responsibility for transportation. Unless there's fed busing or for all. If there's a... It's in your IEP. If okay. it's in the IEP, yes. Yeah. Children that want to receive special education, right. that transportation is not... Or if the right. right. there's a program, If there's a program or servicing right. that that child needs to attend for those services, yes. Right. But so I just wanted to make sure because there was some confusion last right. year um, when kids weren't able to get on the bus. They but they lived in town, but they were school choice in district. Right, so it's parents' responsibility. And the, you know, buses obviously need to stay on a certain route, right. otherwise it's not economical, mm -hmm. and we fill the buses up as much as possible, mm -hmm. so it's difficult to add a child who's not already on the bus route. Can, can we agree as members that when there's an issue, we would agree that we would send them to the superintendent's mm -hmm. office or to oh, wherever. Yes, this, this, got ugly. this got really ugly last year, yeah. and somehow yeah. or another, people are under the impression that I can just make a call to the school department and place their kids in whatever mm -hmm. classes. And I want to make sure everyone understands yeah. that's not the case, yeah. nor do I want to see another member of the school committee <coughs> placed in that kind of a situation either. Mm -hmm. I yeah. want us all to agree that in those situations, we will send them to the... Parent information. Parent information, right. Our staff, our staff is very willing to help me with any parent and answer any questions. But parents, if they have any concerns or questions, should come to the parent information center. I'd be glad to meet with them, and so would our staff. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? So, for all those people out there interested in inter and in inter and in trap, intra school choice, it starts tomorrow. Sounds like so a dance. Right. Oh. <laughs> I can only imagine that off tomorrow. So, get your application in yeah. early. Am I a trap or not? No. <laughs> so, at this point, we're going to move on to the public hearing on the budget. Wait, Superintendent? Yes, thank you. Thank you. I'm excited about this. Yep. First, I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. Um, this is really important that we all get the same message at the same time and promote the conversation and continue the dialogue back and forth. Through collaboration with school and district leaders, school employees, the Finance Committee, and many members within our community, I'm pleased to submit this FY19 budget for the Lemonster Public Schools. We are all here this evening in whatever capacity but I do want to acknowledge that I am speaking on behalf of all students of Lemonster Public Schools. Lemonster Public School District is committed to delivering a rich, 
quality education with high expectations and positive student outcomes. Our district promotes increasing the number of families that attend our schools and strengthen student achievement with strong financial discipline, collaborative budget planning, and alignment of all resources. Through this process, administration and the school committee have recognized that this budget is the financial compass in which to ground the following decisions. First, sound long-term planning, consistent budget reviews with protocol refinement, the development of sustainable programming and staff, transparency of all spending, and last, the targeting of new revenue. The growth in the budget reflects the modest, and I repeat modest, increase in the state's Chapter 70 contribution, an increase in the city's contribution, and additional revenues. Schools, districts, and cities across the Commonwealth <coughs> are joining forces to address the need to reconfigure an antiquated formula which is putting additional strains on our cities. Funding <coughs> is targeted to directly support high quality instruction and learning within our schools and classrooms. The budget provides a growth model approach as Lemonster moves to ensure that every child's needs, whether it's academic, social emotion, or safety, those are met not just at an adequate level, but at an exceptional level. I want to repeat, adequate is not good enough for Lemonster Public Schools. The following assumptions have been recognized as our team evaluated each line of the budget in which to be fiscally and ethically appropriate. Within this budget, you will see that there, we have already put in contractual obligations. Insurance, we have rolled at at least a 6% increase. We anticipate chargebacks from the city side, but cannot shore up and confirm a solid foundational number. We have asked to have the Medicaid reimbursement money applied to the classroom in which the money is gathered. Our employees and our students work tirelessly throughout the year and we are asking to fully fund that money back to students. We also are starting to receive our aid for the displaced students for FY18 and FY19. We have the assumption and hope that transportation will be fully funded and avoid any conflict within the community. All students deserve to have accessibility to education. And lastly, the pieces that we have control of, we have been very responsible in making sure that nothing is inflated over the top. There are pieces like health insurance, transportation, sped tuitions that we can't nail specifically, but we're doing the best we can with what we have to work with. Lastly, the overall target is $71,824,000. $287 and two cents. We're not really sure about the two cents. <laughs> but I heard we've got it. <laughs> After all obligations, salaries are still less for FY19 than they were in FY17. And our expenses are below FY18. I encourage the school committee to vote to move this budget forward to allow for careful and critical decisions that need to be made for FY19. Thank you. Thank you. Um, committee members who would like any questions, we'll start with Wendy. Any comments or questions? Um, I want to uh, once again thank the um, finance subcommittee for the many extra grueling hours that you guys work to come up with this. Um, it really doesn't leave a lot of questions because it's so much uh, more transparent and well done. So I would just echo that I think um, it's important that the Medicaid money be um, put back to where it really should be and that is serving the students who those reimbursements are meant for. And I would really like to see transportation not become a battleground again this year. So that's well. Thank you. Mike? Um, I'm not sure that I have that much to add. I think we've done a pretty good job of putting together a budget that accurately, accurately reflects what's needed. We've avoided layoffs. We've taken small steps forward. Um, we've 
tried very hard to make it clear what we're doing, where, what, what goes where, what's needed. And um, to echo what Wendy said, tried to make sure that every source of funds went where it's really designated for not moving things around. Thank you. Steve? Yeah. So the net school spending, I mean, the baseline is 800000 this year. What is it total? Do you remember off Are you talking line? about the increase? Just 960000 Nine hundred sixty thousand. Okay. So that's the baseline. And then the difference um, in transportation versus last year? Um, I'm asking you so yeah, everyone can get the answer to this. Yep. Okay. So it's a transportation to return in here. I didn't see it. That was one question. I know, off the top of your head, though. I mean, I think it was um, very close to the same amount as last year. Yeah. 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 Y
Um, our neighbor to the north of us, Fitchburg, they fully fund transportation. Um, I do believe that if we do not fund the high school transportation, you will see the dropout rate increase. I hope that um, the city will hear that and make the, make the decision that we did. Okay, Mrs. Sue? Okay, so, <coughs> I, excuse me, I just had a couple questions in terms of presentation. So, we're looking to approve salary line item, expense line item, and transportation. Three separate items, correct? That's what we submit to yes. the city. Okay, so, in response to that, I didn't see the transportation in here. Um, but the other question I had was, and, and I do appreciate the line item detail, which totally we've been missing for several years. Um, Paula, there's a statement made in the beginning of your presentation, and I think we on Finance Subcommittee are fully aware of it. Um, the funded positions with grants, um, we saw in the initial projections mm -hmm. significant reductions in funding of grants. Right. So I guess, does this budget include any grant positions? No, we pull those out. So this is, this is strict local. no grants at all? No. Okay, so what happens if, you know, a grant is not funded, mm -hmm. it's critical, how, what are the, I mean, because we should be thinking about that. We are, those are the conversations we're having now, thinking, moving forward. In the past, some of those grants have gone away, yet we still have held on to the positions. So we've carefully selected what we need to add, where that funding will come from. If a grant goes away, we need to have a projection. Things like Title I are already saying that slowly those monies are dwindling. So we're keeping that on the horizon. But we have a good forecast of where we'll be at least for the next two to three years. Um, and one of the big pieces that we need to put some time back into this year is going back out for competitive grants and rewriting our grants. We've been doing a lot of cleanup this work this year, so we need to get back doing the good work of looking for new revenues. Right. So we're very cautious about that. Okay. So we don't have to worry about no. this presentation, no. anything funded by grants. So no. that's a good thing. No. Okay, and then the other comment I had was, um, so when I looked at the um, programs for special ed, tuition for school choice, not public school. Mm -hmm. So our district had an increase of 14.6% from fiscal 17 to fiscal 18, which is pretty high. Mm -hmm. And as we know, circuit, we don't know how much of that is covered by circuit breaker, mm -hmm. but we do know that circuit breaker is received the following year based right. on the current year. So based on that, that there was a 14% increase in, you know, at a district placement, well, non-public, some of them mm -hmm. are not covered under that. Mm -hmm. I would expect we're going to get a decent reimbursement, yeah. assuming the state funds it at the full 70% or whatever it is. We, were, we just jumped up. We, we budgeted for 65 just to be safe, but it's up to 72 right now. Okay, but I think that's a good assumption. Yes. Okay. So so that will definitely alleviate some of the funding issues with exactly. special ed. Yes. Because it looks like the special ed went for fiscal 18, it went from, uh, it went up only 4%. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's helpful. So I'm just wondering in terms of our projections. If I, so when I go to the first sheet um, and compare what your projections are for school choice circuit breaker, yes. you've only got like 2.9, so I think we can almost expect more than that, correct? Correct. Yeah. All right. So, but we're being we want to be conservative. We know. Right. Okay. And then your recommendation on the Medicare reimbursement. So historically, we always requested the Medicare be covered for transportation. Correct. And I think you're just looking to, to say, hey, I'm shifting the money to the classroom, but that means that instead of it going under transportation, it's, I mean, I want to make I sure that's right. understood. Right. It's the same million dollars, though. In other words, yeah, right. instead of the million dollars going to transportation, the million dollars would go towards the classroom. educational classroom part. So you're going to be, you're a million dollars off. Yes. 
which, no matter which way you slice this, right. you're a million dollars off. Right. That you don't have unless, any revenue source. Unless the city only funds transfer. Well, that, I think that's the that's five spells. That's that's right. Right. I, I, I just want to make sure that's not the I get it. Okay. There's okay. a million off. Right. Yeah. Right. right. There and isn't another million to cover transportation and take this that used to go to transportation and move it over to here. There hasn't, no one identified another million dollars somewhere in this revenue. When we're talking about anticipated revenues, yeah. no one has said in the budget here that there's another million dollars that we've identified to pay for transportation. Right. We haven't come up with a set We asked you for a million no, less no, no. increase on the I general side. I understand. I'm just saying that yeah. at this point, there is not another million identified somewhere to, to, that we have in, in anticipated revenues to put towards. Jonah, uh, uh, just my thought. Um, Medicaid money is generated from students in our classrooms. That money should go back to those students in the classroom. Shouldn't be earmarked to go to transportation. It should go back into the classroom where it is earned, where it is generated from. My thought. Which is why I think it's where it is in the budget. Right. But understand, past practice has always been. We've never, never, never done that because we don't know if it's going to be seven hundred, eight, six, nine. Right. It's one time it's one time revenue to be put towards one time expenses. And so for twenty five years it's always gone towards transportation. Always, always. But I think maybe so the risk we is, shouldn't have been doing that. Okay, so the risk is you're a million short somewhere in anticipated revenue. So maybe it's the circuit breaker or your school choice money that you end up sort of shifting over. I'm just saying, I, I don't want to debate this, I just want to, I think Susan asked a legitimate question. You just put a million dollars into the budget from a financial resource and then, then didn't leave that, that and don't have another mechanism to fill the other million on the other side. But we will know the actual number in June. Yes. So, and we are required once we yep. get your city budget, and we will know that number. There is a June July process where we have to revise this right. according to the realities. I think but Susan was just bringing that, <coughs> noting that that is a significant difference from the past. And just one other point of clarification: Medicare yeah. money is not school committee money. It goes yeah. back to the city yeah. of any community. And we are fortunate that our city gives it back to the school department. Um, a lot of communities don't. And when I sat on the MESC board, we tried to put an initiative in to get that money directed directly to school committees. And it did not pass as a school committee initiative. So just so everyone understands. Um, I did want to make one other point, though. Um, the athletic budget has been increased, which is reasonable. I heard the community say it. Um, so this definitely has a good size increase in it for that budget. That's it. Were you responding to something that you yeah. said? Because we need to give everybody a chance. Yeah. yeah. I just, uh, I am not aware of cities that don't give back. I'm not saying that that's wrong, but shame on them. And just because it, it goes through the city doesn't necessarily mean it's the right thing for a city to keep that money. It is not city generated money, it's school department specifically special needs student generating money. So, um, you know, shame on cities that don't give it back. And I appreciate that ours does. I just would like to see it out. Uh, just, just for the record, there are communities that don't even collect that. Yeah. We're hiring, we hire somebody to get that well, money. Shame there on are communities yeah. that can't afford to get. So I'm just giving in the history. That's and also, like I said, at the state level, <coughs> school oh, committees okay. turned down the initiative to have that money go to the chair. Way. We're getting off the okay. getting off the, the sure. topic. Getting, you know, I always get Thank you, Ron. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll do my best. Um, I want to echo Wendy and everyone else's sentiments and uh, thanking Paula and the Finance Subcommittee for a line item budget that is something that before getting on the school committee I've heard and I was asking for and it really wasn't provided um, and this is very detailed it leaves little to the imagination and I also want to lastly echo Nona's sentiments in that transportation should be fully funded by the city and Medicaid 
should be going back where it's generated. So shame on the communities that don't give it back, but um, thankfully we do. And um, even though that million dollars is putting is being put towards uh, Medicaid reimbursement and going into the classroom, then the city needs to needs to eat that and then give it back to transportation, fully fund transportation to its potential, please. Cody? I just want to take a moment and reflect on how much we have moved since last year. We really have made enormous progress on this budget. I mean, we have a line item budget in front of us. It's presented to the public. It's transparent. It's reasonable. Uh, you know, the superintendent really set out a vision for transparency, and I really commend her because we have it on paper now. Um, so similarly to my colleagues, I just want to say thank you to everyone, to our business office, the superintendent, to the finance committee, everyone who worked to put this together. Thank you for your hard work because we have come a long way. I agree with everything that's been said. Repeat, other than what Isabella and Nona were saying, that one, the city has to fund transportation. That's been a point of contention. That's all. It's been a mantra that we've heard all year long. And the Medicaid, 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 Medicare monies should go back to the classrooms. At most of the conferences I've gone to, it's been a very sore point. Uh, yes, Sue was right. There are some cities that don't even play with that. They don't even give it back to the class. And just because they do it doesn't necessarily mean it's right. It has to stop somewhere. <clears throat> you can say you can shame the, the school districts or the cities for not for not doing what they're supposed to do, but <laughs> public shaming doesn't do any good. If it did, a lot of things would have been resolved a long time ago. The current the Puritans tried that and it didn't do any good. But I agree with everything that's been said tonight. And I'm very happy. It's been a long, arduous process. Stability, transportation. I was looking at all these little uh, signs we have here. And uh, I congratulate the superintendent, the finance department, the finance team. <sighs> and I have attended those, those, I call them innings, because it went on and it went on and on. And Glenn, you know, Everybody put their heads together and worked very hard to get this thing done. And so that way, people out there in TV land can see that there is there, there, finally. Anyway, that's it. Thank you, Ron. Um, for my part, I would just sort of echo what everyone said. This was a real collaborative effort um, with um, the folks on the finance subcommittee, Paula and her administration, the finance department, Glenn and his um, folks, I know um, each of the principals you know, were involved with regards to um, you know what was going on in their buildings. Um, so I do appreciate everyone's efforts. I think we um, spent as a collaborative group a lot of time trying to figure out where our money was going to, how best to use that money um, in the way to get the most uh, success, um, the most out of that money. And um, I know we had to regroup and we kind of sort of go backtrack. Um, and that was not an easy process, um, trying to figure out exactly what staff were where and who was employed and who wasn't and what we needed to pay. So a lot of hard work behind the scenes went into this budget. Um, and I think it's great that we have a line item budget and that there's been you know, transparency throughout the process. So I do appreciate, like everyone else has said, everyone's efforts. Um, so at this point, um, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion that we pass this budget as seen here tonight, make it a living document, so if we have to add something, we can add, if we can delete something, we can delete something, but make it a living document. Right. That's it's it. always a living document. That well, I just want it understood. Change. I want it understood. It won't anything be, uh, you know, uh, trying to read in between the lines. Mike? Second. Other thoughts or comments? Let's, we can uh, do a voice vote. Sure. Starting with, we'll start with Ron this time. Yeah. Yes. Yay. 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 I don't vote for the budget because it just comes to me anyway. 
Okay. Yeah. 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 Ye
Do they, are they projecting any, I, I know, I hate asking that question, I already well. know the answer, but are they looking at, they're getting, we're getting more, or? Yes, it's not slowing down. All right. uh, yeah, I know that. Yeah. So we're doing two drop-ins, one up until March 2nd, and then we're doing our second drop um, come the end of May. So it'll count for those students as well. All right, okay, thanks. All right, appreciate thank you. it. All right, so action items. We've got surplus items in the vote. Yes, we need to vote on. Uh, at the request of the Lemonster Fire Department, we need to clear out the attic space at Bennett School. So to do so, I request that the school committee approve the request to the vote of items currently stored at the school up in the attic. I'll make a motion. And have we taken a look and gone through to make sure that there was yeah. nothing of value? That's good. Yeah. Excellent. Not sure how long it's been here. Sure. I'll make a motion to um, dispose of the items currently stored at the school, including hundred supplies, materials, age books and textbooks, spoken furniture and equipment, and other items that have no value, oh, as well as, I don't know, two four buses located at Ricky Sewing. Are that are a little value, they're worth other than salvage. Yes. Uh, these are surplus, so the motion to accept it. Any other thoughts or comments? Uh, um, just as a suggestion, yep. all schools should be going through everything, every building. Mm -hmm. The top floor of the Gallagher building, there are a couple of rooms there, you know, like you can't even walk inside. Those need to be gone through as well. Most buildings, things go down. Yeah. <laughs> and that building, for some reason, everything ends up at the top floor. I'm not sure why. <laughs> It's amazing. Usually, right, they end up in the basement somewhere, right? This, the whole, there's like rooms filled with things up there. Right? Okay. Uh, audio oh, stuff, yeah. I think, from the, the summer morning. project. Right. So I think just everybody should look through the building and find out if the things that just need to go and spend yeah. the summer getting Great. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Opposed? Motion carries. And um, we've already voted on the budget. So now we're into new or old business. Fabulous. Ransomware. It's a new word in my vocabulary. <laughs> and Mr. Hall, you might be able to define a few of these things because my technology skills really got ramped up in the last three weeks. Um, during the evening of Saturday, April 14th, which was the first day of the April break, spring break for students and staff, the Lemonster Public School computer network infrastructure underwent an attack by a newer generation ransomware virus. This virus affected many of our internal servers, including all email, all health services, food services, library services, management systems, active directory domain services, all backup services, file transfer services, help desk, and file services. So we were truly held captive. A total of 25 systems were directly affected, 13 servers, 11 desktops, and there's one as yet to be identified. The worst part is that many of the, the users were impacted since they could no longer get their shared home or personal folders. Since backup services were also affected, files which we might have been able to restore from were also encrypted and in fact rendered them useless. In reality, every staff member's email service has been affected, as well as many other functions, primarily those of central office. There were instructions to recover our information, and it involved using Bitcoin to pay ransom to regain access to our files by decrypting them. The problem with Bitcoin is you never know who the receiving party is. There is no specific time frame for receipt of goods, or in case what we had were decryption keys, and you had no guarantee you will receive what you requested. Another factor of using Bitcoin is the time to complete the transfer of money is a huge variable. It has been agreed upon by the developers of this cryptocurrency that the transfer will not take place until at least six different transactions have taken place whereby the exchange has been deposited into a block where it will be confirmed by the Bitcoin network in as little as 10 minutes or as long as 24 hours per cycle. If all resources were available and dedicated, a complete six transaction transfer could take as little as one hour, but if the network is busy, it could take upwards to six days, which it did for us. If we had not used the option of paying the ransom for the decryption of our files, 
we would most assuredly be in for a much longer recover at a much higher cost. In the case of one of the, one of the file servers, there were over 237,000 files which were encrypted covering all departments in central office. We are still in the process of identifying one un unknown impacted system and are developing a plan to help prevent any attacks such as this in the future. Some needed steps to help ensure our information is more thoroughly protected are port scanning, vulnerability scanning, review for rogue active directory and local accounts, complete network virus scan. We must scan every day. We need to update and or replace older systems. Any of our systems that had Windows 10 were not impacted. Updates must be deployed and applied onto all systems. New backup strategy, a 321 system has already been put in place, two on-site backups and one for the cloud. More rigorous scan filtering, we're already talking to different companies to help us out. We need to purchase remote access software for the tech department and the biggest piece is education for our staff and all users from day one and concurrently. <coughs> we, um, all it takes is for one person to open up one tab. We have on our end 900 staff and almost 6,300 students using PCs every single day. We had thousands of systems impacted. I do want to thank all of the people who worked with the Lemister School Department. Dean was 911 with me all day. Um, our legal department, law enforcement from local, state, and federal. We're still working with FBI to come in and work with us. Uh, our IT teams, we have uh, very limited staff on site, but we have an, uh, an outsourcing company right now, ClearCom, which we share with Lemonster Police Department and City Hall separately, but same. And um, before that, they we have recovered 100% of our files, but we are now sort of in a forensic mode, trying to do things bigger, better, and stronger. Thank you. Thank you. And also, John Richard, who takes a yes. lot of heat. We had to come up with $10,000 of the legal way. Yep. A legal way. We can't just, somebody calls us and says, give us $10,000. Yep. The other thing I think that's critical is, we had somebody in 2016, we had a company come in here, wasn't that long ago, that did an audit on our system. And if you remember, the question I asked, is the system protected? Does anybody else remember that company that sat here oh, less than a year ago that talked about our IT system? Mm -hmm. And I asked, what, is, what are the next steps for that IT system and what is the cost? And one of the questions I asked is, was the, is the system protected? Because I know ours is. We spent a great deal of time making sure that our system is, is, is impacted. So I just want to make sure that's noted and that people don't forget we had this conversation with a company that we brought in here whose job it was to do nothing but to audit our system and give us a snapshot as to where our system is now and what we needed to do to continue in the future. I, I sat right here at that same meeting and I asked the same questions then. I'm not trying to blame this on anybody, especially you, Superintendent. I'm just saying, you know, when, when uh, it, it, people like to make me the fall guy for every single thing, including the weather, everything, right? For the things that go wrong. And um, I'll take my responsibility, what my responsibilities are in the legal manner. But I will take responsibility for something I have no legal authority over. Uh, and I don't run the public school systems. I don't hire. I don't bring these companies in. I have absolutely nothing to do with that. So I just want to make sure. We had an audit of our system. We had an audit of our system. I have a copy of it. Everybody does. And I asked this question specifically about our system um, being secure. Um, I just wanted to know who actually paid for the ransom? Was it the city or the school? And are we bonded? So we have a we have a tech line. So at this point, um, we we have done that. Once we settle down, there's the possibility of us looking at insurance. We should have insurance on this. We haven't had we haven't come up for air yet. Um, Bob Barron has been remarkable. He has worked seven days a week, uh, twelve hours a day trying to un uh, unlock these systems. So once we come up for air, we're going to see what we can do about that. We'll turn the claim into the city, to, to, to our insurance city. company, Maya. Okay. They'll decide whether or not maybe some of it is um, um, a deductible, but maybe yep. some of it is covered. Yep. You know, they, we just had this whole, you know, some of our people attend some of these high-risk situations in terms of the insurance. So 
we haven't got that far. As the superintendent said, it's been getting the system back up and finding the legal way to make a payment to somebody we don't even know that's probably not even this country. How do you how do you do that? Right. And we we yeah. found the way to be able to do that. Okay, so if you could just let us know we as it evolves, absolutely. and thank you for communicating as you went along. Yeah, we all switched to email, and now I know. Okay. I know. But no, no, that's good. At least we do that. Right. We had to do that, and I think you know it does um, highlight the collaboration between okay. the school department, the city. Uh, law enforcement um, and everyone. Um, everyone on the city side. Everyone, oh, it All our IT, you know, we have an uh, ITTF which is made up of departments. Every one of them dropped everything for days to be able to try to help this out, see yeah. whether or not they can reconfigure it. And everybody, everybody was just um, conference calls, yeah. weekend calls with me, all weekend communications on what was, you know, what the possibilities were. So. Uh, Team effort. Yep. Not a situation anybody's happy about. But, and uh, that, unfortunately, was your first uh, vacation, which really was not a vacation. <laughs> she was talking to all of us 900 times. Now you know why day. I don't take vacation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe the side of it is, you know how we've been saying there's a redundancy between the school department and the city on payroll. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is an opportunity. Well, Munis is protected. Pull it over to Munis the wasn't compromised. No. Munis wasn't compromised. Well, the I thing is, city software. We right. Use. That's not the city software we already use. Right. That wasn't compromised at all. No, but just saying that this might be an opportunity to kind of eliminate some redundancies and push them over to the city. You know, where you do the payroll now. Yeah. So I, I mean, just think about it. It might be a good opportunity good to, um, you know, kind of. Make things better, yeah. you know. And where you have a good secure system, mm -hmm. yes, go for it. Oh no, no, we're we're all in favor of helping the school department to get to where they want to be. And I think that's what we've been trying to say is we're 100 percent in favor of that. And we all read that report, the past report that was done in last fiscal year on where the system needed to be and any deficiencies that. So we weren't aware that there were any holes in the system based on the report from the company that was hired to come in and tell us where our system was. And most of the deficiencies were in switching over from some of the old PCs and moving to, you know, Chromebooks. Yeah. That's it. Before so that, that technology grant that we just got to, that's going to be huge, right? It's, it's it's huge, um, and we will be done before June 30th. So they've already gone through Johnny Appleseed. I think they're in uh, Mr. Bennett tonight. They are working around the clock. To it's just shy of a half a million dollars of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So it's great if you have boxes and boxes of Chromebooks and all of this, but if you don't have the infrastructure to right. use it, right. use it. Right. So that's going to be great. Okay. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Mike, did you have something to add? Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. I hear that we as a school committee do not know as much as we should about where we are with information technology relative to where we should be. So I'm wondering if we should not form an IT subcommittee or task force to meet with people involved and in in the experts who want to help out. We'll get, we'll take that report we got a year ago and look at what happened here. I want to make, I mean, we need to make sure this doesn't happen again. We need to know what concrete steps we need to take to get to where we should be. I mean, it's, and it's important to notice that the few newer Windows computers we have that are running Windows 10 weren't affected. All our old machines, which was a lot of them, that aren't able to run Windows 10 were affected. We should know how many of those we have, what it's going to take to modernize, so we can have those conversations about how they affect the budget. And Mike, uh, as you remember, I mean, you attended meetings not just this past yep. year. We were allocating free cash every year. And then last year, of course, we couldn't because we were making up the deficit for the end of the year. But every year, we were putting another 250 into it, uh, uh, in addition to what we had. When we had that plan. Continue to do that. That hasn't gone away. We just had to take a break at that particular point to take care of the deficit that we had last last. Um, Unless I'm, less, I'm yeah. less interested in figuring out what went wrong yes. before, though. Yes, I agree. We're having a plan to go sure. forward. And Where and are we? Where should we be? How past, do we get there? In the past, we've always received a technology plan uh, that outlined, you know, sort of where we're at, where we need to go next, and prioritize those steps. Um, so we haven't received that um, 
probably in the last two years, but prior to that we got one um, routinely. Right. Um, so I think maybe that would be the place to start and then we can figure out where do we go from there. Well, I agree with Mike on the, on, on the committee. And mm -hmm. this is what we do at City Hall is we have, it's called ITF, right. and it's just made up of employees. And, and so they're hands on. I think we're not looking to set direction in this thing here, just to have an understanding so that Right. Right. I mean, that's all you're trying to do. Have the information first. Right. Right. Yes, I, mean, I think it's important that we as a school committee, to the extent that we set policy and set budget for right. know what know what it is we need to do and know what that's going to cost and, and right. start working on a plan to get there. So Absolutely, and that's something that we've had in the past, but we've just recently gotten away of. But I think if we can get that, then we can start the committee to review that and figure out where do we go. But we need the school department to give us that information first. I, uh, I attended a, uh, a meeting at ASABET about a month ago, and there was four PowerPoint presentations. Two of them were on cyber terror technology, and they spoke, as I told Paula and I told Eileen, they spoke about this particular event that had happened at another school. And, and I'm still waiting for the PowerPoint presentation. When I get them, I will send <coughs> them to Paula, and Paula will send them around. Because Yes, a subcommittee should should be held, but as the presenter said, we don't know what we don't know, and we're also in fear of a black swan event, something that we don't even have any idea that it will happen. It will happen. Because te technology, technology is all so new, and as Dean was saying, there's somebody out there Male or female, young or old, that's just playing with their with their computer, hacking it through, and we're basically naive about it. We we don't know what's going to happen. Well, hopefully, we this is a wake up call, and we won't be naive anymore. So if we can get those PowerPoints, oh. get them to Paul, and she can disseminate them. And um, you know, if anybody would like to be on the subcommittee, but I think we need the information first to yeah, work off of, um, that would be good, but perhaps Mr. Hall, um, who is very knowledgeable to join the um, subcommittee, um, so that we have somebody, uh, or more than one person, yeah. of course, um, interested in the community who has a strong IT background um, would be the most uh, helpful, uh, much like our transportation committee where we've had uh, a variety of stakeholders, if we can open that up uh, for the IT section, that might be very helpful. Um, so good suggestion, Mike. Um, at this point, um, one of the other, uh, because of the way our meetings have fallen, uh, we did not get to recognize uh, Chris, our esteemed uh, school committee secretary, uh, who works tirelessly, um, is a wealth of knowledge, and um, really uh, keeps the show running for all of us. Uh, we appreciate her immensely, and uh, we want to acknowledge all her hard work uh, and dedication to the system. And we have a gift. Uh, for her. I know where it is, and I remember that, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> you don't remember something. That's Chris. Chris. She knows where it is. Where is where is the history? The history is invaluable. She knows the combination to the vault at the bank. Thank you very much. Wonderful. So we do really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Does anybody else have any new or old things to present? Yeah. It's been very helpful. The calendar. The calendar of events. Oh, thank you. The FC for tennis, wonderful program going on in all our schools. And there's a lot of, of course, at the end of the school year, there's all kinds of activities, particularly at the high school level uh, for everyone. Um, we all should have gotten um, information on the graduation and we do need to um, respond um, to Chris Lord's uh, secretary if you are going to attend so she can make sure that there's seats available for you um, and the other thing that we do need to do I don't know if we put them on our um, 
agenda specifically, but usually we have a vote to make the last day of school a half day. I just talked about that. Um, that good thing. So we're going to do that in the next meeting. We'll keep everybody guessing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's guess. <laughs> Okay, so if we could make sure that's on our agenda next time, that would be There's great. There's already parents coming how many days till they yeah. go back to school. Right. <laughs> so, no, no? Yeah, just want to go um, kind of falls in between new and old business. Um, six of us attended the open meeting law um, that was held, a workshop that was held at the library um, last week. And for those that didn't come, I think I furnished you with yeah. a copy of the PowerPoint presentation. It was really, um, I thought it was one of the best workshops. Um, I'm speaking for myself, um, I learned a lot. Um, and one of them was of what we addressed tonight on if anybody else other than LATV is filming, you need to address us at the beginning of the meeting. You're welcome to film it, but you need to make it known to us that you, you are doing that. Um, I think it was a, a good workshop, so I hope those that um, did look over your uh, PowerPoint presentation. Thank, Thank you for doing this. Thank you. Um, I just got a letter you have to I didn't see that. I got a phone okay, call, see. so I thought everybody got it. No, I think it's it coming it soon. Mail. Uh, Chris, could you make sure that uh, there is a letter going out to all the around graduation? I've seen the envelopes addressed, so I know that they're just waiting a certain time element to send them out. And it's uh, obviously the first Saturday, which is June 3rd, second, second, first Saturday um, at Doyle Field at 10 o'clock. So, good times. All right, any other new or old business? I know we are starting to get stuff about the MASC conference, and so maybe at the next school committee meeting, we can um, sort of take a poll on who um, is planning to go in November um, so that we can get the early bird uh, right. Usually I do like three early birds. Right. Yeah, but we lost that list too, didn't we? We did. Yeah. So we paid for three and then we have one. one. Uh, yeah, there was just a couple of us who went and we just run and I, right. Maybe Speaking we can get right. the thing on us. Yeah. All right, so at this point, um, we're going to move into executive session, and um, we will be returning. But, so we ask that everyone please leave um, the building. Um, and, yeah. and it's going to be a point of starting. Well, first of all, I need you to make a motion. Okay, we'd like to make a motion to enter executive session under Chapter 39 to discuss contract uh, negotiations. And we will be returning. Everyone's vote, starting with Wendy. Yay. 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 Okay, we're back in session. Um, and at this point in time, we have um, two items to bring back in front of the full committee and the public. Um, the first one is um, the um, Paula Deacon's contract negotiations uh, for superintendent. Um, previously, we had <coughs> voted um, to offer the superintendent the position pending contract negotiations. And Nona, would you like to make a motion, please? I'd love to make a motion to um, recommend this contract for Paula. And um, do we need to give any details? Um, it's just a three year contract. It's a three year contract. Um, and I'll be second. effective as July, July 1st. And a second. Any comments? Congratulations. Okay. All those in favor? Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Nobody opposed? Congratulations. Thank you. And with that, Sign it in blue. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Welcome aboard. And we also need to give everybody, I was noting yeah. today that we still don't have Mike and Isabel's um, nameplates, name plates, and that really needs to happen. I'm not sure why it's taking um, so long. I just forgot about that. Okay. <laughs> You, you know, know, now we're back. 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 Back.
um, no, if you could uh, just travel up with it, that would be um, yeah. helpful, and it follows something decent looking. Okay, thank you. Awesome. <laughs> uh, so then the next um, contract negotiations that we want to um, discuss is Unit B. And Nona, would you like to make a motion, please? Yes, I'd like to um, make a motion to accept the Unit B contract negotiations. And this is for um, those that are not principals and not teachers. So that in the middle of the system yeah. principals and other other administrators that fall into that category. Um, I commend Paula and the Unit B negotiating team for negotiating this contract. It was well thought out of and um, good work. And it was a nice compromise. It was a very nice compromise. It, it proves the point of what negotiations mean, a give and take on both parts. So we do appreciate that. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. And any comments or thoughts? All right. All those in favor? Anybody opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. And at this point, that's all we need to discuss um, upon coming back. So we need a motion, to adjourn. a motion to adjourn. Sue, do I have a second, Ron? I'll second it. Awesome. All those in favor? Woo-hoo. All right. Thank you very much.